can drift over them. No matter the conditions or the type of water you're forced to fish, the muskie can be found if proper attention is given to specific right. details. That's right. I fear you can catch muskies with regularity by paying attention to tiny details. That is to say, choose your water and your structure carefully. Under every condition I know, you will find a window on a given piece of structure that allows you the opportunity to succeed in catching muskie. The size of the fish will be dependent on a few basic characteristics which we will define. Today we're going to focus our attention on what I call classic musky structure and identify areas of importance. Areas such as the crest, the spine, the food shelf, inside turns, points, flats, alleyways, and not to mention weed beds. To some people this may sound like an entire lake, but to an experienced musky hunter we're talking of an area commonly referred to as an isolated structure and may encompass only a few acres. The jackpot if you will. Which brings me yet to another subject matter, the proper choice of lures, jerk baits, crank baits, surface baits, and blade baits. They all have their time and place, and if you don't mind, I'll help you choose some appropriate lures depending on the conditions. Just hang on to her. Okay, I have to move the boat forward, because we're going to be on this reef here in a second, so just hang tight. Okay, just fine. This rock here is one foot deep or less. You can see it's breaking right there on top of the bulrushes. If we don't get off this rock, hang on to her. She's okay. She's okay, but we have to get off that rock. If we don't, we're going to be in big trouble. Get out here so I can drift. That's the downside with fishing with the wind like this. Okay, what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this up, that way if we get tight to it, we can drift right over it. Okay, what I need you to do is come this way with her. She's really not hooked that at all. Nice no, fish. She's almost kind of green too. Nice fish. We had to do that or we'd be parking at 492 on the rocks. You don't want to do that? There. No. Careful, Bob. Sweetheart. Okay. Doesn't help. Uh, Pardon? The wind's blowing this strong. Okay, hang, hang tight. She's off. All right. See what I'm gonna do. Got her? Hang tight to her. Hooks are replaceable. Yeah. Cut them out of the net. Once I get them out of the net, then I can lift her out. She's unhooked. She's fine right now. So yeah. Sitting just like she is. I know that's weird. Okay, so my freeze pull is pushed, so when I lift her up, just take the net out of the way, okay? Okay. That's <sighs> what we came here for, huh? That's fish. Up here on top of that rock reef, it was a war zone to get her in this net. <laughs> no kidding. She came up, she missed that jackpot once, and she turned around, she came back down again. I'm gonna get her back, okay? Yeah. Let me get a photo of the release. Nice thick fish. 
Look at that. Let's first look at the way in which a muskie might use a piece of structure and what it means to us. Let's start with identifying the elements of our chosen structure. First, the crest or crown. This would be considered the highest submerged portion of the structure, often found near the center, however, can exist anywhere on the structure. The spine. This is a very interesting part of the structure because of the magnetism to fish it exhibits. It almost acts as a super highway for the muskie. However, I have witnessed many fish using the spine that just won't respond to a lure, or at least the lure I was throwing at the time. Sometimes our presence is sensed by the commotion in and around our boats, and that alone will cause even the best lure to seem unproductive. So, if your choice is to fish on top of the structure, i.e. the crest, the crown, or the spine, it would be in your best interest to exhibit caution and be quiet. Points are pickup areas for any structure and without a doubt need careful consideration when sorting out structural elements. Inside turns are what I refer to as catch-all areas and later in this production I will explain this concept. The food shelf or dinner table as commonly referred to is a larger area offering attributes not found in other areas. Food shelves are commonly fished too fast and not often enough. You see muskies don't stay in this area very long. They enter, they do their business, and they exit just as quick. I consider them high percentage areas, but the conditions have to be right. Nothing stays on the food shelf for any length of time. How about fast vertical breaks? You bet. They also have their own set of attributes, none less important than the other. If we agree fast escape to deep water sanctuary is important, then you better learn how to read and use these areas. How about seasonal movements that depend on this type of structural element? Trust me, they exist. Today, we will learn how to deal with them and use this knowledge to our benefit. And last but not least, vegetation, both emergent and submergent. A strong understanding of these two elements is a must for success. There's cabbage on the inside as we go up in here. I'm going to run us kind of fast. That last fish we just had really wanted a fast moving lure. But there's cabbage up here in front of us. There's a rock right out here. There's some of that red top that we call it up on top of it. And that's where we've been finding these fish. I've got this awaker on top, so uh -huh. I can see pretty good. Good. This cabbage will hold fish all day long, but they won't come out of it until right before dark. I'll parallel it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, one more shot in here. We're out of here. Keep your eyes out. You're fine. Good job, Sylvia. Good job. Let me get my foot out of it. You're okay. She came right out of there and ate you, didn't she? Mm -hmm. You want to bring it to that? Mm -hmm. Should we hand grab her or net her? I don't. What do you say? We always get a lot of hooks in there. We'll cut her out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sylvia, nice fish. <laughs> you did good, yeah, kid. Finally. <laughs> you did yeah. good. It was great. It was fun. Great well, time. we got some wind coming Thank in. You. They're forecasting some super wind for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if that wind comes up, we're going to wish that we had more days like this. Nice fish, 45, 46 inches. Good I'm going to set her back in the water, though. Get her in there. You did good. Thanks. Good. I'm going to go this way. You did good. The crest, or crown, as defined earlier, is the highest submerged portion of a structure. Okay, 
But how and when do you fish it? Upon examining the physical makeup of this element, one must first consider it a high activity spot. I often refer to it as a high percentage spot, or an area in which the mood of the muskie would be at or near her peak if present. The problem with these areas is that they are what we term a spot on a spot. If you simply run onto a larger structure to fish the crest or the crown, you would surely spook off other muskies holding on this structure and thus limiting your possibility for success. In most cases, I would recommend you make long casts to cover these areas and avoid them until you have fished other key elements and can do so without forcing the fish to shut down or vacate the area. After all, it's hard enough to find a spot, not to mention one holding a fish. Muskies that use these areas will have to use many other areas in their attempt to achieve this destination. Expect to find the muskies using this area during the more extreme low light or inclement weather patterns, in other words, dusk and dead calm, to rolling and raining. The spine of the structure is in fact a super highway to the crest or crown. However, it is not necessarily true that muskies using the spine will necessarily end up on the crest or the crown. There are often many other attributes relating to the spine that might stop and hold muskies during their adventures on the reef. Keep this in mind. Not only do muskies use the spine, other small fish or bait fish do as well thus allowing the spine to collect or attract its own populations of forage for brief periods. Here again is a situation in which the structure will attract fish, but in reality does a poor job of holding them for any length of time. I have found over the years bigger fish like to use areas that create junctions rather than a straight spine. I have also noticed in the right conditions there will often be many users on the spine at any given time. Again. This is an area that almost requires long casts to be ultimately productive. One word of caution when scoping out this portion of the structure, as well as the crown and the crest, be quiet. Big fish this high in the water column will not tolerate noise. How about points? Well, points are interesting in the fact that they act as a pickup area or a collection area for almost the entire structure. That's not to say fish can't enter your reef area from, say, the flats or the food shelf or an inside turn. It's to simply say, if you want to target the most active fish using the reef during most fishing conditions, your first contact will be made on the best point your structure has to offer. Every point has its own set of attributes, conditions, and periods when one can expect a user. In most cases, I like to use points in very steady weather conditions or after the sun has been up for a while. If your point has submerged vegetation, it will not only be more productive, in most cases it will also hold fish longer. There's that H word, hold. That's right. The points are for the most part the first part of a structure that will actually hold muskies, allowing them to move on and off the main structure. This ability to ascend and descend while almost throwing caution to the wind makes for a prime, if not the prime, starting spot for your campaign of the mighty muskie. There are many things to be said for points. Some with long tapers. Others have fast oh, breaks, and even some God. have built-in saddles. And among the most believable would be their ability to produce within an incredible array of weather conditions, seasons, <laughs> and day parts. I have some favorite fish. points that to the that? untrained angler would this. seem downright unimpressive. But during very windy conditions, when the waves are blasting straight in, they can be that unbelievable. Then there are those Thanks long points that are actually a deeper part of the spine, and oh boy, do they attract fish. The key here is to locate points that allow you a wide variety of successful conditions and be prepared to spend time hitting them. Steady weather conditions seem to be the most favorable. However, keep in mind, better points, by virtue of their physical makeup, offer huge windows of opportunity. How about those inside turns? Well, this is where we go when the conditions erode. You know, on the back side of a three-day cold front, you get the picture. This is in fact the best, or at least the first area I will seek out when I am forced to catch fish for the show and the weather conditions simply will not allow me the pleasure of fishing where and how I'd like. You can also be assured big, and I mean very big fish, use these areas regularly during adverse conditions. You can mark my words on it. These are not fish holding spots during the warmer periods of the season, however, when the old temperature starts to dive deeper than I care to fish, you know, that late fall period, you can bet these inside turns can outproduce any other part of your chosen structure. Probably the narrowest of all windows of opportunity during the summer patterns, however, also some of the most productive for big fish. If you believe, and I do, that ultimately the muskie's location is dependent on a hierarchy or a pecking order, 
then it's easy to reason that under extreme conditions, the more superior predator will occupy the more favorable location. Whatever you do, don't overlook inside turns. Food shelves. The name itself implies the nature of the beast. Many fish can and will use these areas at the same time. But because of the abundance of food, they can give you the impression that they are not always actively feeding. These areas are notorious for attracting following fish. Large in comparison to the rest of the structure, you can expect to spend some time figuring out when and where they are using the area. When we look at the larger, more tapered nature of a typical food shelf, it's easy to identify with the fact that you will need a relatively large variety of lure presentations to be successful. Oh, what the heck. You needed another excuse for a few more lures anyway, didn't you? Keep these areas in mind for the first few or the last few hours of daylight. And don't overlook going down to 15 or so feet after midday. The fish use it, and so should you. Vertical breaks are key in deep, clear water rocky areas of the lake and often exist somewhere on what we are referring to as a classic structure. Fish use these vertical highways simply because they are forced to. The muskie is a cautious, low light predator and in a classic clear water system the only protection she can find might be her deep water sanctuary and that is where these fast vertical breaks come in. Some of the more rocky areas on structures, such as our classic hotspot, will have very few submerged aquatic plants, due in part to the lack of suitable soil and other reasons. In this case, you can expect the mighty muskie to adhere to the most strictest of rules, be able to reach cover fast, and in this case, cover is simply depth, and fast is vertical. Fish will use or hold on these spots during highlight periods of the day, maintaining a favorable depth depending on the existing light and water temperatures. Once you have concluded this is the muskie's location, they can be caught by presenting any number of bait presentations, such as a deep diving crankbait like the pig from Odyssey, or slow rolling Peterson Tackle's new spinnerbait, or running a slower, possibly deeper running jerkbait such as the Odyssey suspending pig. Nonetheless, this will be a case where versatility and variety will prevail. The key here is deep, and in some cases slow, depending on the attitude of the muskie. I would suggest you parallel your structure and attempt to keep your presentation in the strike zone longer. Fall periods will prove that these areas are some of the best of all possible choices, and there will often be many fish in a very concentrated area along a fast vertical break. For what could be the fastest action during a slow period, learn to fish fast vertical breaks. Ah, vegetation. Now we're getting to the root of things. Many facets of a superstructure can attract fish and or bait fish, and some can even hold them temporarily. But nothing will attract and hold like quality vegetated areas, and I can't stress the importance of this factor enough. Every superstructure that has produced the truly big monsters for me has had some form of vegetation. When we examine the potential of a reef or an isolated structure, we get some sort of read on its potential. Add quality vegetation and you can multiply the efficiency factor of that reef by five. If we examine the characteristics or attributes of the vegetation itself, we find the potential to supply needed oxygen to the reef inhabitants. We find cover to attract and support a complete ecosystem from plankton to minnows to crayfish all the way up the food chain to the largest predators and we find it will even recycle itself year after year. We said earlier our points were primary contact areas for our structure dwellers, and if there was vegetation on the points, it would act as quality attractors and holders. This is true. Now, add the vegetation to some of our other areas, such as food shelves, or maybe an inside turn, and you start to see the factor times five potential. Not only will our superstructures with vegetation attract more and better quality fish, they'll also offer the angler a greater window of opportunity for success. Cabbage is a hardier, deeper plant than say coontail and will last later into the fall period and is frequently found on the ends of points and inside turns. The deeper the cabbage it seems, the longer the plant life. I've experienced in many cases a type of thin leaf cabbage in shallow saddles on reefs and witnessed its death as early as mid-August. My guess is this is due in part to the elements such as temperature, light, or mineral makeup of the water. Coontail, on the other hand, starts early in the season and usually exhausts itself before summer's end. Bulrushes and spike rushes do not add much oxygen to the system. However, they are a very valuable form of shallow water cover for both prey and predator alike. 
This type of vegetation can also alert an angler to the unseen presence of soils nice beneath morning, the surface Jeff. that will host other forms of vegetation. Yeah, this visual covered. identification will assist you in determining where, where to fish without coming. disturbing the structure. Remember, for, uh, the key here is paying attention to detail, in. and this is an important detail. Wet. You're coming right over the top of that first little rock pile that's there? Yep. And there's more rock coming up here by the bulrushes. Well, we already uh, established that uh, they're on the rock. Oh, huh? they're using the rock, there's no doubt of that. Whether they're using it, you know, in this bright of sky, I don't know. But you would think that they could be up in here. That's nice right in there where I just threw. A lot of rock combination with some spike rushes or bull rushes up in there. Sure be nice to find some uh, vegetation on the rocks. It's just been tough. I'm used to fishing where there's weeds. Uh huh. This is a little different. You got to get used to it. You got to, you know, when you get used to the fact that when when rock is what is holding them, that's where they're going to be. They don't need anything else with it. I like to use these bulrush areas like this for the forage. You know, the forage will sometimes lock up in there. It's safe for them. And that forage ventures out, it's going to get eaten. Just like my jackpot coming out of there, huh? Exactly. Something's going to eat it. Let's hope. Well, clouds are burning off. Are they? Yeah, look in the west yeah, there. Yeah, that's a pretty good front coming there. question is, which way is it moving? It's moving from east to west. Is it? Well, then we're in good shape.
<laughs> hang tight now, hang tight. Wow. Get a hand on here. Just hold on. That's a big, big fish. We're into it. That's a big, big fish. I'm just shaking. I really need to. Uh, that's a big fish. That's well over 40 pounds. Okay, now what I want you to do is ease her this way. Okay? Ease her this way. Okay. Oh, yes, we're into a hog here. Okay, settle down. Okay, I gotta get a cutters. Here. She's free there. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, we're free. Let me get the hooks out of here. This is a very, very big, 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 big <laughs> fish. Wow. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, you know how to use my camera? Just kind of sit her down on the water. Just kind of hang on to her there for a second. Okay. No, I'm not sure, but uh, I learned quick. Okay. She's, she's good. She's down on the water. She's fine. Okay, there's a... Uh, I'm going to get it out here for you. Okay. Hold on to her. Okay, here's what I've got on it, okay? You got to turn it on. It's on, okay? This is a telephoto and a wide angle. Okay. There's a box inside. It'll take it vertically, take it vertically, and make sure the entire fish and everything is in the picture. I'm only going to have this fish out of the water for a couple of seconds. So I want you to get down, get the shots, and we'll put the fish back. This is a very big fish. This fish is really close to 40 pounds if it isn't 40. Okay, I'm going to hand you this. Okay, let me get my stuff organized up here. Okay, here's what I'm going to have to do with this now. That's okay. I'm taking the whole net in. Okay. Oh. Wow, Bob. Oh. <sighs> That's what we came here for, huh? Oh, this is a monster fish. It's 54. Okay, I'm gonna set her back, okay? Oh, this is a big fish. That's, that's easy, 40 pounds, Bob. Oh, easy, yes. This fish is 54 inches, if, if it's an inch. Look at this. Oh, look at the head on this thing. Oh man, is that a beauty. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that, huh? Yeah. And did she eat that jackpot? Oh, she's <sighs> inhaled it. Oh. Pretty fish. Look at her, look at me. She's like, hey Bob. Been waiting to meet you. We're back in here, sweetheart. Oh, oh my God, Bob. This is your spot. Oh, I told you it was. Didn't I told you? I said, this is a big fish spot. And that was a big fish lure that you were repairing this morning. Wow, Bob. Oh, she's 54. At least 54. Oh, good girl. I'm going to leave her set. There she goes. That is beautiful. Oh. That is simply beautiful. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>